start to open up more, the blood flow, the lymphatic system. Anybody know how many miles of circulatory system you have? My medical guys. How many miles of circulatory system do you have? 32. 32. Consider this. Any blockage is blockage. For, so shit's not moving around, right? Stuff gets stiff. I just get old. No. You stop moving. You stopping moving will kill you just as fast as eating like shit and beating yourself up and doing all the torturous shit we do to ourselves, right? People die from stopping moving. Go look at elderly homes. They aren't moving. They stop moving. These are very simple things you can do that take just a couple minutes. We get through both sides of that. Cool. All right. On the ground. In a plank. Hands should be just behind the shoulders, not in front. Your butt should be slightly on, belly button drawn slightly in. Now, push back. Anybody who's done yoga, it's called downward dog. Slight bend of the knees. Then, we will come all the way forward into upward dog. Yeah. <laughs> Inhale and then exhale and press back. That is one. Ten of those. So come forward, open it up, take a deep breath in as you come forward. And then exhale, press back. Try and keep those arms locked out. And keep a slight bend in your knees when you come back. Try and get those heels to the ground. If you want to do some dive bomb push-ups instead, you can do that as well. My Navy friends. Dude, you got 10. Mr. Z. Introduce the new exercise. Okay. We're gonna get familiar with this today. All right, so I'm gonna show you this exercise real quick. And then we're gonna do uh, 10 of those, and then we'll include it in whatever Brian has. We will incorporate today. it today. Get a good balanced position, feet square like mine. Bend down, put your hands on the ground. And just sit your leg across, right? Put your leg across, you sit on your butt. Come back to that position, like a little bear crawl, and sit to the other side. And all we're doing is switching. That's one. That's one. two. Oh. Three. Four. Tap, tap that ass. Try it one time. Ten of them. Ten of them. <laughs> Step the leg through. So you sit onto the ground. Good. Stay balanced. It's important that we get that leg fully to the ground because we're, we're mimicking getting up off the ground. Spread yep. your leg a little wire, Peter. Get your butt up. So it's not a push-up position. Be, be aware, it's not a push-up position that you're coming into. It's like that down with dog position almost. So we'll get better at it as we do it, and then uh, keep doing it. Keep your mouth shut. Keep your yeah. trap mouth shut. Name of the game when we're here is to be aware where that breathing goes. Everything should be dictated by when we're here. It should be dictated. We, we do not need to go any harder here. We do not need to mouth breathe here. So, I don't expect anybody to win by mouth breathing today, all right? Whatever your ability is this morning, it's perfectly fine. All right, here's what we're gonna do real quick. On your time, no mouth breathing, to the second pole on this hill and back. 
Nice little warm up. Nice little cardio warm up. You can hike it if you need to. So go that way. Or you can jog it. Right up this hill, second pull. about 96% of max heart rate nose only. It, when I first started doing it, I got to like a 135 heart rate and that was about it. And then it just progressed, 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 progressed. And I prefer now to nose breathe over mouth breathing because the air is just so much drier and you feel the tissue and everything start to lock up and you feel, uh, you'll see it today. Like if you guys start to really pay attention to this stuff, especially with what we're doing, like in the combatives, like the combative shit will really expose this stuff. But even on the range, when we start doing more intense work, you'll start to see yourself tensing up. Like you, you'll start to shake more. A lot of this stuff that starts to happen, this is a result of not only the thinking, but these are physiological reactions that are happening based on not only the thinking, but the reactions to the thinking. Like overthinking something because you wanna do it perfect or you don't wanna get hurt or you know, you know what I mean? So there's no difference even in me being on a bike. It's like one, once I once you hit a certain intensity, it's all the same thing. The interesting thing is, is that we, you know, we look at like working out as like I'm burning calories. Well, that's one way of kind of doing something metabolically. This is one way, right? So if you look at free divers, a free diver can burn upwards of 600 calories an hour just diving down and coming back up. Their heart rate probably doesn't get above yours or my resting heart rate. So how the f are you burning 600 calories? Those who've done their homework will know. Thermal regulation. Body's ability to need to, to, to heat itself up, right? So it's gotta use energy to do that. What's the energy? Oxygen, okay? Chess players, grandmaster chess players in one day can burn up to 6,000 calories sitting there playing chess, not doing anything else. 6,000 calories. That's the amount of brain power that they're putting into stuff. Your brain and nervous system need at minimum 20% of your energy a day, okay? If they get that aerobically, better. But it has no problem getting it anaerobically. That's the beauty of the system, of the biology. It's so intelligent that it says there's not enough oxygen and there's two ways of doing that. So if like I get up or I go run up the hill, there's instantaneously not enough oxygen in the area where the cells need it. So it instantaneously starts to shift to use more carbohydrate and more anaerobic activity. You understand anaerobic, aerobic, anaerobic without oxygen, aerobic with oxygen. We are designed to be, we are obligate aerobes. So we use oxygen as our primary source of fuel. It's how we, it's why we stay alive. We all understand that, right? So, so going from that, we then, if we don't have that demand, it then can catch up if we then supply it with more air. So respiration automatically goes up when work rate goes up, right? Here's the other way that oxygen isn't available. If I'm standing here talking to you, I instantaneously stop using oxygen as efficiently because I'm offloading more carbon dioxide than metabolically necessary. <coughs> so I'm removing the variable that kicks oxygen out of the cell, out of the red blood cell to be used by the mitochondria in the other cells. So the system says no problem. It doesn't care how it gets it or why it gets it. It just says no problem. This is ancient wisdom. No matter what you believe in, 2.5 billion years ago, the deal was done. Single cell organisms decided to make a deal. And they said, we are gonna be multicellular organisms and we are gonna use this oxygen rich environment to produce one of the most efficient energy sources that we can, aerobic metabolism. And so from there, 
that has been the most efficient process we know in biology to use. I'm giving you a hand at understanding that just by going, hey, just shut your mouth. This is the most fundamental, easy thing to understand with health, okay? So, for today, we will not be doing the hill again. So, <laughs> but what we will be doing, so there's a sprinter van at the end of the road. Well, not the end of the road, middle, middle way down, right? That's our target. We're gonna go 15 minutes straight, all right? We'll go one lap to the sprinter van, come back. You will lunge three blocks, all right? Then, when you get to the third block, we're gonna crawl to the next block. We will then implement 10, sit down. what's that? Sit down. Sit out, right? Then you will walk to the end of the next block. So it's a total of one, two, three, four, five blocks. Then head right back out and just on repeat for 15 minutes of movement. Your pace controlled by this variable, okay? No prizes. Make sense? Yeah, sir. Yes. All right. We'll get a timer. Here we go. Three, two, one. Begin. Four squares. Nose breathing. Offload that shit. Watch how quickly things start to feel good. So this nose breathing thing is just kind of the foundation of stuff. The other layer of it is that there's kind of a gearing system we figured out. You got people still coming up the hill. Yep. And the gearing system kind of works with speeding up the actual breathing pattern and then going to <coughs> nose mouth. So nose in, mouth out. And then mouth in, mouth out, but doing it with an intention so you're controlling the variable at all times. And understanding that actually controls the energy of what you're doing and knowing where you're at at all times. It's a little bit more complex, but the fact is, is this is, so we measure energy through gas exchange. Anybody ever done a stress test? When they hooked you up, right? Most of them were just mouth, so you didn't even get the actual ability to breathe through nose and mouth. Weird, cardiologists are doing that. Because we're measuring gas exchange only one way, right? And so there's actually, what we started to do was we, we had questions. So we got a bunch of metabolic carts, really expensive things that measure gas exchange, oxygen and CO2. So the oxygen that goes in 
the oxygen that ends up coming out because there's a lot of oxygen that still comes out no matter what the breathing is unless we're at maximal levels right and the co2 that comes out this tells us how we're using fuel so when we start to go from more fat burning aerobic to more carbohydrate burning aerobic to more anaerobic which is strictly carbohydrate it becomes glycogen at one at, at a certain point right so the higher the higher we lean towards that higher anaerobic state you're offloading a shit ton more carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide is the byproduct of cellular respiration right so this is how we understand that we started putting these things on and we started by doing something simple walking a dog around the block for five ten minutes so we'd open our mouth and breathe walking the dog then we'd come back and shut our mouth just nose breathe two entirely different energy systems that are being used and we get on a bike 200 watts five minutes nose only 200 watts mouth only two entirely different energy systems so it turns out your breathing is actually the thing that's regulating how we use energy it's not your heart rate your heart rate's just an indication of, of intensity think of it as a tachometer right think of your breathing as the gears so as i start to gear up right the energy's changing but if i can control the gearing i can control the energy and you felt yesterday when we did the carotid artery right how many of you guys felt that drop right boom you're con instantly controlling things so you can actually control that while you're working but you just gotta actually control your action right all right so real quick couple stretches just just open things up and then we're gonna go sit down real quick inside and I'm gonna show you something on how to come down as quick as you can off of something like this speed up the recovery process all right so we'll go through a quick breathing protocol that you can just walk away with and use anytime you want all right all right one foot in front of the other kind of like where I'm at if you need less because you're more inflexible that's perfectly fine the more flexible you are great rear leg is my left I am going to reach back and try and touch the back of my knee now here's the key you don't have to reach over your head. You can just reach back. Nose only, take a deep breath all the way in. Watch how limited your breathing is as you get back there. Come back up a little bit to where you can fill that tank, but stay back. So it's a static stretch, right? So I'm static stretching. All the way in, all the way out. Trying to stay back touching that back of that knee now if you're only touching your, your hamstring that's perfectly fine because that's your your range of motion stay there keep opening up watch yourself start to open up as you start to draw more air in let that air draw you in and then when you exhale it you, it should allow you to gain a little bit more room you can turn the rear foot out slightly but keep the front one straight hips stay square Keep breathing. This is probably one of the better stretches you can do because of the amount of sitting that we actually do. So this is opening up that entire anterior chain and for and as we enter and as we force in that breathing, especially with the nose, from a mechanical standpoint, you're actually triggering your diaphragm to work more. Okay? Your diaphragm is the main breathing muscle. It's the epicenter of all movement. Switch sides. So if I can't engage that diaphragm, I will compensate through what's called the chest cascade, which inevitably flips me right into mouth breathing because it's so easy and I can get away with so much. So stay in nose only. I force that diaphragm and I limit the compensatory stuff that's happening from a mechanical standpoint, right? I can still do some compensating but I can't get away with it as much because all movement is centered around what goes on around this rib cage at the base of my rib cage because that diaphragm circumnavigates and attaches to that spine so any 
deviation away from that limits how I can breathe. So I have to organize it, especially if I've added resistance. Keep stretching it. Big inhale, all the way out. Hip square. Hip square, you can turn, you can turn the rear foot out. All right, come on up. For those of you that are really tight, we're here. For those of you that are not as tight, put those hands together like that. Big inhale. And then pr what I want you to do is try and inhale into your back, right? Hold it for a second. And if you're here, same thing. Inhale into that back, your T-spine, right? So right here, pulling that air into here. Big deep breath, drive it in, open it up. All right, switch. real flexible if you can get this lift those hands a little just a couple of you cool let's take it inside grab a seat we want you seated when we do this I don't want to have you sit outside and get all cold right so there's still a lot of excess carbon dioxide being produced. We're going to offload some of that and then we're going to go into three breath cycles that are slow and controlled to bring things down. All right, big deep inhale through the nose and then out. And in and out. In and out. In and out. In. In, out, in, out, in, and out. Keep going, fall out. Inhale through the nose and out. 
in, out, in, out, in, out, in, and out. In through the nose, out through the mouth. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Watch how radically things change right now. Keep going. Anybody feel the difference already? How quickly it can change? A couple of you. Keep going. Don't worry. It's all good. We're intentionally doing this. In through the mouth, out through the mouth. 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 Through the mouth, through the mouth. Keep mm. going. Almost there. Three more. Two more. Last one. All the way in, all the way out, hold on the end. A little bit longer of a hold, because we just got rid of more CO2. Just relax, hang out. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale for five seconds. Hold for 15. There's five. There's 10. Exhale for five, four, three, Two, one, inhale for five, four, three, two, one, hold for 15.
five, four, three, two, one. Exhale for five. Last one. Inhale for five. Hold for 15. Five seconds. And nice slow exhale on you. And just relax, normal breathing afterwards. Who felt the change from when you walked in to now? Should be a pretty significant change that's happening and coming down. The most important thing you can do in any high stress situation, the reason we're, one of the main reasons we're so unique is that we know we can manipulate stress in order to create an adaptation. No other animal does it. Adaptation only happens when we start to re recover from things, when we start to get into more of that parasympathetic dominant state. Okay? You can't learn in a fight or flight state. You don't learn, you just react. That's where the training shows up, right? So, whether it's an emergency, somebody got hit, somebody got shot, you just went through a high stress situation, combative situation, you're in a fight, you just got done working out. You just did a math test. No joke. Like, you just passed something, you just went through a high stress situation. The fastest thing, the best thing you can do is come down off of that and process it. You go to work, you close a deal, I do this with execs all the time. What did you do after that? Oh, you got in your car, sat in traffic, and got pissed off. Awesome. I used to do that all the time. And then I started changing what I was doing because I was trying to understand what it was I just went and learned, right? So I, I had a situation that happened with me that like, I've intentionally engaged in in order to understand these things, right? And it, it showed up once in playing on a playground with my nephews, where I went up a ladder, hit my head about seven, eight feet up on top of this ladder because we were playing tag and I didn't see a bar. Compressed my spine, dropped out, did a backflip, landed on the ground, and I was paralyzed. That was what I knew. I couldn't move my hands, couldn't move my legs, and I was in a pretty shitty situation. Only thing, because of the amount of shit that I do with this, right, that I knew to do was just control my breathing. What does a high stress breathing response look like? Yes, but what does it start with? What, what, what was going on on range yesterday? Were you guys paying attention to other people? Did you see any of this? Breath holding, did you catch yourself doing breath holding? That's the first thing that typically happens. What about in turbulence, people who don't like flying? <laughs> right? So it's, that's the first response. Then it's catch up because of the CO2 build. <sighs> Shit. We were just talking about this, Don, with like, oh, sir, you might be having a heart attack right now. What, what, what do you think somebody's gonna do if you tell them something like that? Versus like, hey, how about we just control your breathing and not hyperventilate you so you're constricting your blood vessels and then, which means you're constricting the blood flow to the brain. So that, did you guys feel the difference in the nose to nose mouth and mouth mouth? You know that high feeling you were getting? Those are the blood vessels to your brain constricting. That's your body going, no problem. We're just gonna, we're gonna prepare you for some changes right now, right? You're going into a high sympathetic state. But that's why I, that's why we brought back in those slow control breathing patterns because then it opened everything up and that oxygen got used, all right? So the, what did I do? I started breathing in this situation. And I avoided a lot of shit that I've seen happen with a lot of people who I've worked with in high stress situations. A lot of military, a lot of high trauma stuff, TBIs, things like that. Things that start to compound, where you can start to introduce things so that you're processing quicker. Maybe it's not that extreme, but I guarantee you, with everybody in this room, you're gonna have an extreme situation a few of you are going to have that extreme situation. One of the best tools we've got 
It's how to control our breathing. Because it instantly grabs a hold of that nervous system and changes things. Cool? All right. Nice. Um, the craft beef cattle get a little older, which gives them a higher propensity to gain some weight and get a little more natural natural marbling and tenderness. They seem pretty calm and relaxed. Yeah. Living a pretty nice life out here. Yeah, they don't have a lot of worries. So this is Bailey. Bailey. She's a five-year-old quarter horse mare. She came out of a rain cow horse program. She kind of decided that she didn't want to do the arena stuff anymore, so she came to live on the ranch in January. And she's been doing ranch work stuff and just loves it. <laughs> she never had a rope swung on her, and I branded calves on her this spring. And So this is our standard box. If you order one of our boxes, it comes in this. Um, as long How as much you don't... meat pound-wise can you fit in there, like 15 pounds? 15 to 18 pounds, depending on ice packs, depending on where it's going. Um, it comes frozen. When it leaves here, it's froze. It's frozen, yes. Uh, and then actually there's a USDA food safety handling card that we insert in there uh, that talks about proper food safety. If it shows up and you have issues, these are the guidelines. Uh, anything over 40 degrees needs to be thrown away. Uh, and the thermal dynamics of shipping boxes is actually really interesting. Uh, everything goes in the box, we seal it, it goes straight to FedEx. Over time, it will start to unthaw, especially right now. It's 100 degrees outside. If it shows up to your place and any part of the box is still frozen, the whole box never got above 32 degrees. So basically everything starts at zero, climbs to 32 within the first eight hours. And it'll hold at 32 until everything is unthawed and then it comes up. So there's this big plateau. So as long as we deliver in that plateau, we're good. I got a, you sent me one, the one you've got on the yeah. floor and I'm 800 miles from home, 900 miles from home, and it everything was still totally frozen, which was great. I just passed it from your cooler to mine and took off to Tennessee with it. 